Hello everyone, welcome to The Couch. My name is Pastor Justin, and I'm one of the pastors at our church, Monticelli Night Methodist Church, and we are so thankful and excited that you're here with us tonight. Um, I'm kind of solo. Um, if you didn't know, my wife, Sarah, um, recently found out today she had COVID, so I sent the, the crew home. Scott Culver is supposed to play for us tonight. He's not able to be here because I don't want to, in case I'm infected, to expose him. So I'm it. I'm the camera guy. I'm the lighting. I'm the sound. I'm the the preacher, I'm the worship leader, so pray for me and pray for you as well in this time together. Um, please make sure that you're going to post in that chat. We love to see your comments and conversations and um, to share the live stream. People know that you're here and that you're a part of this this community of faith that's gathering together. Um, you know, the fact that we are a community is not not a small thing. We are a community of faith, a place where people can come to go closer to God, closer to others, and be challenged. And that's the key. We want you to be challenged, not just that you're going to come and leave and be the same, but that the Holy Spirit would intercede into your life and, and really cause a change. Now, tonight we're talking about this concept about authority, um, the authority of Jesus. So as um, I sing and play here in a second... I want you to answer a simple question, and it's, it's, here's the question, okay? What does it mean for someone to have authority over you? Now, that's that terminology, authority, sometimes is negative, right? Um, but it's true, right? We have people that have authority over us. We all have bosses, or we all have different people that that have authority over our lives. We have the authorities have authority over our lives. So what does it mean for a person to have authority over you? Um, tonight I'll be playing and singing a song called Good Grace. Uh, this is something that I'm not very comfortable in. I can preach all day, but singing is not really my thing. So uh, hopefully I don't butcher this too much and you're able to still worship. So let's let's pray together before we worship. Gracious God, we know that you're here today. We know that for some of us this week's been a long one already. And that the, uh, the hump day in the middle is not making it any easier, God. So tonight we pray that your spirit would come and be with us, that we would have an experience with your with your spirit tonight, Lord, that we can recognize the authority of Jesus and that that God's grace would become apparent in our lives. So God, as we take this time and set it apart for your glory in sacred space, we pray that you would use it for your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Together, strange as neighbors, all blood is one. Children, generation, every nation, your kingdom come. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Are you heaven? 
let the praise go up, let the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, all you heavens, let the praise go up, let the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound of His children. Clean hand, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in His blood. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom come. Whew. Now that that is over with, I hope that that set you in the mood of worship tonight. I'm so thankful you're here. Wow, you guys have hosted a lot. Let's check these out. Oh, and I got to switch the microphones around. My bad. You probably couldn't hear me. Hopefully that's better now. The authority is someone higher and more experienced and knowledgeable than me. That's exciting. Although, i am be honest with you. In a lot of situations I've been in, the person with authority might not have more experience. And maybe that's just me. Um, but I've been in those situations before as well. Um, people in a subordinate position to instruct and guide others, okay? Um... Someone has authority over me. They're in a position to require me to do what they believe needs to be done. I love your caveats in their sentence structure there, Megan. That's beautiful. I love it. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Jan. I appreciate you. Um, so, we've been talking about this Jesus as Messiah sermon series, right? And we've been going through the book of Mark and looking at different aspects of Jesus as the Messiah. And in Mark chapter 11, starting in the verse 27, we see... Um, we see Jesus go into a situation that's kind of uncomfortable. And sometimes Bibles, like my Bible here, it has this thing at the top of it that says, the authority of Jesus questioned. Kind of a synopsis of what's going to happen in the story. Let me read this scripture for you. For you. This is Mark chapter 11, verses 27 through 33. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I'll ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or of a human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, they feared the people, for everyone held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. So as we look at the scripture passage here tonight, um, we see that Jesus, right, he's doing all kinds of stuff. And he was not blessed or or commissioned, he wasn't ordained um, or or told to do any of this by the people who would normally give you permission. There wasn't like a laying of hands on Jesus by the chief priest. No one said, Jesus, we want you to go uh, start a traveling ministry, a fresh expression in Galilee. Um, no one told Jesus <coughs> that he was allowed to go and feed people because that would just destroy the economy a person decided to start feeding people on his own accord or to heal people because, well, Jesus, then we have people we have to find ways to give jobs to. You're really messing up the entire socioeconomic issue. Jesus didn't ask permission. The chief priests, the, the elders, they are asking Jesus, hey, who, who told you that you can do these things? Who, who told you that you're allowed to be here? There's a, a show called Community. Or no, sorry, it's called Park and Rec. And there's a, a guy in there, his name's Ron, uh, in, that, in that show. And he's at a park, 
and he's he's doing he does crazy stuff and this person comes up to him he says hey uh do you have a permit he's oh yeah sorry i got one right here and he hands a guy a piece of paper and it says i can do whatever i want to do and it's signed by himself now that's that's hilarious for for the, the tv show but that's that's kind of what jesus is, is doing he's saying i have the authority because i have the authority that that's what it is so he says to the, to the people well who do you think who do you think John's baptism came from? Is that God or from man? Now, I love when Jesus does this because Jesus doesn't often, hey, Jackie, Tammy, wow, Terry, all y'all jumped on. Hey, Lori, it's my boss lady. What's up? Brad, how we doing? Oh, I, I didn't realize. Hi, Nash. You guys had all popped on. Sorry about that. Hey, Kaylee, you're here too. So Jesus very rarely gives answers to questions in scripture. He loves to ask questions because oftentimes we we know the answer to our questions, but we're afraid to answer them because then it holds us to a higher responsibility. And you guys know this as parents. So if you're a parent, if your kid asks you a question, you'll begin to ask them questions to get them to think of their own answer. That's called growing up, right? The process of them learning to, to critically think and go through processes. Well, Jesus says, hey, I'll ask you a question. If you can answer me, then I'll tell you the answer. This is hard. Because if they say that John the Baptist, his baptisms come from heaven, then what does the scripture say? He will ask, then why didn't you believe him? So if, if Jesus is doing this thing, or if, if John is doing this thing on heaven's behalf, and the chief priest didn't believe in him, well, that means they're going directly against heaven. Ooh, I, that's a scary thing. But if they say John's a human, just he's did it all, all himself. John had such a following because oftentimes when God begins to move, people begin to watch that the, the people will get angry and they'll lose the popular vote, essentially, of what's happening in Jerusalem. So they take the easy road out. Oh, Jesus, we don't know. We don't know whose authority John did things in. I, I think sometimes we are faced with the same issue. Jesus is the Messiah. But whose authority is in the Messiah? Through Like, who, who gave Jesus the right to, to be the Son of God? God. It's... It's a hard concept, but it's not really. If we agree that Jesus is the Messiah and he has authority from God, that implies we believe in, in a God that has ultimate power. And that Jesus speaks on his behalf. We would have to then go and do the things Jesus tells us to do. But if we say that, oh, well, Jesus doesn't have authority, he, it came from man, then he's not strong enough to save us from our sins. And we're kind of caught in the middle. So our response seems to be ignorance, or at least an outward ignorance. Of, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know what I believe. I, I, don't, I don't know who Jesus really is. When in truth we do, it's just for us to answer the question will require us to make changes in how we live our lives. By whose authority are you living your life? There's authority and wisdom. You want to you want to ask us about wisdom, Deborah? Have you met Chloe? That's a bad idea. That is not a good thing. So, when we look at the authority of Jesus, we see that we we've read the end of the book, right? We kind of know the story. Jesus has come under his own authority, being fully God and fully man, to show us how to how to live. For us to to have a relationship with God, to forgive us of our sins, and call us to change. If all you want is forgiveness of sin, there's not that package available. Like there's not like a basic cable package when it comes to being a Christian. That you just get the salvation from sin without the transformation through the Spirit. It, it doesn't work. 
That's not how Christianity is. You have the supreme package or you have nothing at all. So if we accept that, then we have to accept that what Jesus is telling us to do requires us to change. But maybe no one's ever given you permission to change. Maybe no one's ever given you permission to, to lead. Could you imagine if Jesus had to wait through the process of going to the, the elders and the chief priest to be able to be allowed to start a ministry? Could you imagine that process? Jesus' ministry could have lasted less time. Might not ever got through the process. Because Jesus is pretty radical in how he fully trusted God. But instead, Jesus just assumed authority. And decided to make a change happen. And then he told us that we would do greater things than he did. Now, I've kind of led you down a road here. Let me give you the signpost we talked about, okay? Jesus has authority because he's fully God and fully man. Because of his authority, we should listen to him. Listen to him. Literally, God told us that. Listen to him. Jesus tells us that we will do greater things than he has done. So if we're supposed to do greater things, and he has the authority to tell us what to do, what great thing have you done because Jesus is Messiah? Now, great's a subjective word. Maybe it's what thing have you done? Have you been waiting for the skies to open up, for God to... To shine a light on a, on a child that's, that's in need of food. Or to the person who needs clothing. Do you want like a checkpoint marker over top of a person's head? That's the person you're supposed to bless today? We're waiting for the authority. We're waiting for the, the ability to do things we're supposed to do. But Jesus said you already have it. You have the authority. So do it. Change and be an agent of change. Build for the kingdom of God. Don't just talk about the kingdom of God. Create community. Don't just live in one. Build one. We have the authority. The Spirit is guiding us already. Why aren't we doing it? We could do. Well, that's a great question, Mary Margaret. Mary Margaret asked this question. Did he really tell us to do greater things than he did or just telling us that we could do greater things? Here's my, my caveat to that. I don't believe Jesus would have told us we could do greater things if he didn't expect us to. I feel like what Jesus already had done, if we just did that, that would have been enough. Deborah, how can we do greater things than Jesus? He died for our sins and is our salvation. I don't think anything I can do be better than that? Absolutely. So let me let me kind of, I don't know if I can explain that, but let's walk through that together, okay? Remember, when we are baptized, we're baptized into death with Jesus. We're resurrected into a new life with Jesus. So, Jesus, being filled with the power and spirit of God, was in a very small location, bringing forth the kingdom. And yes, we cannot top the whole dying for everyone's sins portion. That's on him. He's got it covered. We don't have to do that job. It's already been covered. But Jesus did not have the ability to feed the 5,000 in your community. Contrary to some belief systems, Jesus didn't take a boat to America to start doing stuff over here. Instead, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus sent us to do greater things. The church to bring forth the kingdom of God. And we're supposed to be doing that. So if you think about it this way, Jesus really stayed within like a 10 mile circle his entire life. The greater thing is that we're supposed to take that and go and make disciples of all nations, not just that nation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That we're supposed to go and do new things. Let's see. If God is love, which John says, then he will lead us with love to love. 
we can show greater love because we are his body and we have a million hands and feet and hearts. Absolutely. God, you're so good at this, boss lady. Wow. Good point, Deborah. Try to make sure I catch up. I have this habit of always carrying food hygiene stuff with me. There you go. Proud of you. Come on, so he's not asking us to do heart surgery. Yeah, it's not rocket surgery. It's something I like to say at the time. God's not asking you to do rocket surgery. He is asking you to plant something. Now, plant something is a, a concept. Can you see my shirt? Isn't that cool? That our district, Northwest District of the United Methodist Church in Indiana, um, is promoting this concept, right? That you already have the authority to plant something for God. That you have already been told that you'll do greater things. That you have already been given the Spirit of God. That you've already been given direction to love your neighbor. And you've been placed in spaces that Jesus himself never could have walked. Your workplace. Your apartment complex. Your kids football team family group. There are spaces and places that Jesus himself didn't have the opportunity to walk. That we as his body are supposed to go and build that community on his behalf. We can plant seeds of kindness. We can plant seeds of love. But it's our job. Now, so often, the church waits for its pastor. Say, we're going to plant something. We're going to start this new initiative. And programs are great. Um, we're, we're always trying to find a good program for our church to try to do something new. But you don't have to wait for my permission to do what God has called you to do. I, I, I thought this one without saying, but let me say it clearly. I'm not that big of a deal. You don't need authority from me. What you need is to be led by the Spirit. And all you have to do for that is to ask. We are called to be God's hands and feet in the world. We are called to plant something in the name of Jesus. And he has already got it you into a location, into a people group, into a community that you are supposed to be planting in. Does that mean that you're going to have a church and that you're going to uh, you're going to sing hymns, you're going to take a tithe? No. No. What it could mean, though, is that when you're out with your friends for uh, Tuesday Night Margaritas, that you can pray for the salsa and ask if anybody has any prayer concerns before you guys start drinking. Or when you're going out on your last trip to the boat with the boys and Take a, take a moment to say, guys, you know, I, uh, I'm i just really struggling right now with how I am as a father. Do you guys pray for me? That's it. The concept of the church being what we think it is and buildings and, and budgets, that's not really what Jesus was talking about here. Instead, he's saying you will do greater things as a collective. It's a you all of us, because we will get to be eyeball to eyeball with more people in our lifetime now than Jesus was in his lifetime then. We have a greater influence in our lifetimes now than Jesus had in his lifetime then. And we need to go and plant something to do it with the authority and power given to us through Scripture and by the Holy Spirit. So, what do you need to plant? What do you need to plant in the name of Jesus? What is an area? And this is an easy exercise. Let, let's do this together. You know me, Justin. I'm an extroverted introvert. Uh, I'm an eight on the Enneagram, in case you didn't know that. Um, pretty boisterous. I don't, I don't know any strangers. Everybody's a friend, right? What is the people group in your life that I could not get into. The people group in your life that because of your work, because of your children, because of your school, because of all the things that you were involved in, what is that group of people that I can't get into? Ask the Holy Spirit to identify that for you now because friends, that is where you plant. And it doesn't mean, hey, I have to, we're going to do a Bible study. We're just going to start reading scripture at work. 
No, what it means is that you begin to share how God has impacted your life in natural ways because God doesn't only act in supernatural ways. God acts in natural ways. And you begin to build a community where we experience God together. You know, I had this conversation with Lori today uh, via chat. Okay. Great question, Mary Margaret. Explain to me how I have more a uh, greater influence on my coworkers than Jesus has my coworkers. Absolutely. You see them every day. The spirit is always moving. Pretty and grace is always happening in the world. And yeah, Jesus, is, his name's kind of out there. We know the, the Christmas story and the Easter story. But they're not ever going to get to see Jesus walk up to them and show them compassionate love. They may experience Jesus in a, in a way, or the Holy Spirit may bring Jesus to, to alive to them as well. But you, living out the life that Jesus has called you to live, has a greater influence in their life because they can't co corporeally touch Jesus. They can't, like Thomas did, right? They can't touch his hands and see his side. But they can see that your life has been changed. And how your life has lived is different than the world's. And that is how you have a greater influence. You know, the, the fact that the church exploded and, and was crazy, crazy growing, before the Bible, the New Testament was ever put into print, is because individual people shared how Jesus transformed them, shared what the Spirit was doing in their lives. They didn't have a Bible to go point to. They didn't have Jesus to go take a picture of and say, look, here it is. They told people how the, the living God, the Holy Spirit, was transforming their life. And that is how people come to know who Jesus is. Not the same grace. Absolutely, you plant a seed. I didn't say grow something. I said plant something. We're planting the seeds of community. We're planting the seeds of experience. We're planting the ways in which God can work into our lives and in their lives. And here's the thing that you may never see that seed grow. That's not what God's called you to do. God's called you to plant it. That's, that's who we are. Paul says this. You know, Paul plants a seed, Aquila waters it, but God makes it grow. Our job is just to plant something in the name of Jesus. Well, friends, as we're coming close to our time here, I love the conversation. We're going to continue this conversation. I'm going to make a post about this in Mumsy Online this, this evening. But how can we be in prayer for you? And my prayer for you right now is that you Listen to what the Spirit, is, the Spirit is telling you is your community to go plant in. What is the soil in which you're supposed to plant for Jesus in right now? If Jesus is the Messiah and he, is the Messiah and he has authority over your life, he's told you to go plant something, it's time to do it. So what is that going to be for you? How can we pray for you tonight? Um, while you're posting those in the chat, let me look through some of these comments because you guys are firing. Okay, well, uh, my old co-workers, Kaylee, no names, please. Don't be, don't be, don't be outing people. Don't be adding people. <laughs> That'd be so bad. You could add somebody and say, hey, you should listen to this. She's talking about you. That Don't do that, please. Tracy, I'm so glad you're here. There are people in our circle of influence who have never heard about the empty tomb and what Easter is really about. There are people who only know Santa. You can share the birth and beauty of Easter morning. Absolutely, yes. Yes, yeah, share the truth. That'd be phenomenal. Sounds like a self-serving prayer. All nations, absolutely. Hey, Patty Godlove, I'm so glad you're here. Your car is so quiet when it drives. She has an electric vehicle. It's awesome. So see you guys popping off here. Any other prayer concerns? Make sure you post those in the chat. Um, and also, if you have a prayer concern throughout the week, um, we have opportunities to pray for you throughout the week. Just post those amongst you online. Even if someone's not commenting a prayer, because like today I had a crazy day, right? Um, driving back from where she does supposed to be at, then hopping on Zoom, doing all that kind of stuff. And I saw that there was a prayer concern that came through. I, I prayed in that moment, but I didn't get to type it because that's illegal in Indiana to have your phone out while driving. Um, and I, I think my family would prefer I get home safely. So you know that we're still praying for you. If you post a prayer concern, I promise you there are people who are praying for you. So as we come tonight to prayer, it looks like I'm praying for myself and my wife and my children, and I'm okay with that because I do that anyway. 
Um, so yeah, let's let's pray together, friends. Gracious God, you have called us by your power and authority as Lord of our lives to plant something, to do something, to to be the literal hands and feet of Jesus in the world. So God, tonight I just thank you that you've given us the authority and the power to do what you've called us to do. Because if it wasn't for you giving us the power and authority, we could not do it. It would not be possible. God, I pray for every person who's watching this, listening to this, that you would speak into their heart, that you would show them the community they're supposed to plant into, God, that you would give them the seeds of the right words and the right place and the right time and the right experience of God. They would be able to put those into Oil you've already prepared before them, God. And they can watch as your spirit begins to move. And we expectantly wait on that to happen, God, because you said if we come expectant with you, that you would hear us. Father, I pray for my family and so many other families in um, our community and, and indeed our world who are still fighting COVID. I pray that Elena and Chloe and myself would stay healthy, that Sarah would have a quick recovery, um, and that we're able to just get back into the rhythm we've been in, God. And I saw that um, Sarah said this as well, but thank you that Lori Blaine Gibson, God, and Trace Zimmerman are on tonight. Two amazing pastors, amazing leaders, amazing women. You have so much wisdom and knowledge of your spirit and your word and your truth. That they were here tonight to, to just be in, the, in, this, in this group of community and to be a part of it, God. And I pray that you continue to bless their ministries and I pray that you would go with Lori and all the work that she's doing as well. God, we pray that you would allow us the grace to know when we need to move, to know when we need to be challenged, and to go with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dan, you're late, brother. You're late. It's okay. You can rewind this. You can watch it later. Friends, it's been a great night here at the college. Hope to see you next week. Where we're going to have Will Deeds on um, to talk about his Guatemala um, mission work that he's doing. Also, we posted a ton of events in the Facebook group. We have an Among Us night coming up. If you don't know what that is, you should YouTube it. Uh, maybe not. Actually, just ask me. I can tell you. Uh, we have a book club coming up. We have the How to Pray class, which is going to be chef's kiss. It's going to be so great. We talk about how to pray. It's going to be a phenomenal time. So please go to Mumsy Online. Check out those things. Say you're going if you're planning on going. We'll see you there. Have a great night, my friends. Be well.